Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into how to play with clarity. So the key thing here is economy of motion in guitar playing. And I'm gonna kind of explore a few iconic rock and roll licks just to kind of give you an example. Sometimes the problem why you don't sound great is just you're trying too hard or just playing too hard. You know, sometimes you hear people playing like, you know, and they're just putting so much effort into it and it just doesn't sound that great. And you can radically improve your playing by zeroing in and focusing in on some of the details. So here's three things that you can do to really improve your playing. And this is gonna get you playing clearer and cleaner and more fluidly. So here are three things to focus on. Economy of motion, the transition from note to note, which is basically the fluidity and how you kind of get things to sound really smooth. And then finally, combining specific techniques to get the sound you want. You know, so for example, a good one would be hammer pick pick slide. So first up, what is economy of motion? So it's all about making your movements as efficient and effortless as possible. This is really helps you play more smoothly and it also keeps your hands from getting cramped up and everything like that. So, you know, if I play a scale, what I'm gonna try and do is move my hands basically as little as possible. And you see, if I really was moving my fingers, I see a lot of people trying to play like that and they're trying so hard to play fast. And really the secret to playing fast and playing smoothly is to try and get that kind of effortless playing where your hand is really just making the minimal movements, you know. And sometimes you'll still great players playing and it just looks like, it looks like it's so effortless. And that really is because it is, because they've created this pathway to go from note to note where they're using the path of least resistance. So I'm gonna play this scale and I'm gonna try and really that way you can start to generate a lot more of a smooth sound so you can see how much smoother and quicker it is so getting the right pressure on the strings is crucial if you're playing too hard you know it's just it's gonna it's gonna really strain your fingers and it's, it's, it's not gonna sound good it's gonna probably go out of tune as well if you're pressing down too hard so you want to be playing with just the right amount of pressure if you're playing too soft, it's, it, a lot of times you are playing pretty soft, but if you're if you're not getting the right contact with, with the string, then it's gonna sound muffled. So here's some exercises that you can do to improve this technique. So we're gonna start with some basic spider exercises. We're just going up kind of chromatic scales like this. And the point is to focus on small movements. So start slow and focus on each movement. And just really relax your hand and just start to go up chromatically like this. It's not exactly a chromatic scale, but one finger per fret. And just focus on getting a nice, relaxed hand. Like that. And those are great exercises to do. And just the main thing to focus on is that economy of movement where you're just keeping your hands really relaxed and getting a good connection with each note. So that's a good that's a good way to warm up. And remember, it's not about how fast you play, it's more about how well you play when you're playing fast. The next thing we're gonna talk about is going from note to note. And you know, a good way to practice that is take that same to take those same kind of chromatic exercises and try doing some more of these spider exercises like this. So, you know, with that exercise, it's the same kind of thing, chromatic scale, but I'm going, I'm starting on the high E string and I'm going down two frets, going to the next string, going up two, down two, and up two. So it creates this little circle effect. So that's a great way to practice that economy of motion. Just go around that. And then basically what you can do is practice trying to make each note ring out as long as possible. So exercise 
the thing that you'll see is I'm playing single notes, but on certain transitions, I'm letting a note ring out and then playing another note on top of it. And that's part of what really makes guitar playing sound great is this idea where you can kind of start to blend notes together. And essentially you're, 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 you're playing two notes at once because as that note is ringing out, you hit the next note. So you create these overtones and these kind of, these kind of notes. And this kind of, the effect of this is that it starts to kind of build up this harmonic blend of notes. So let me show you an example of that. If you take an archetypal lick, like a Chuck Berry style lick, you know. You know, so a lick like that. If you actually analyze what's going on there, it's a really clever mix of a few different elements. So he's putting together scales, chords, and arpeggios, and he's mixing this all together to create this killer lick. The elements of that particular lick would be, you know, like a, a major chord, and then you've got the pentatonic scale. And then you've also got this kind of like rockabilly scale. Which, which is used a lot in rockabilly music. Run, really. Okay, so let's let's break that down a little bit. That's not actually the cleanest lick of all time, but it's a it's a great lick to understand how to take scales and chords and blend them together to create something that just sounds killer. He's not just running up and down scales like that. He's using a blend of all these different techniques. So we're going to start off by. So that, even that first lick there, he's sliding into that note where, he, where you hear two notes ringing over the top of each other. So, you're sl so you just slide, and then you're playing this little double stop, walking up to this, and again, a double stop here where you're playing these two notes at once. And that's a huge part of rock and roll, is this idea of like not just single notes, playing two notes at the same time. You always hear Eric Clapton talking about this too, about how when you when you have two notes ringing out over each other, that's what really makes it sound killer for rock and roll. So you've got that slide there as well. You're sliding into this little double stop. And then you're going to walk down this scale. But notice there, rather than that, I, that economy in motion is like I'm holding down my first finger like on this kind of half bar and then walking down the scale. And you can and you can hear those sympathetic notes ringing out over each other. So you've got this blend of these notes, and then that's based basically he's breaking up the the chord there by hammering on. It's, it's the whole lick. It's not single notes. It's a combination of notes blending, creating kind of dissonance and interest and harmonic richness. And then you go down to this kind of double stop or a power chord down here. And again here, it's that same little kind of shape there. You see that shape a lot in rock and roll and Chuck Berry, that little minor third shape. And slide down. Now let's just listen to how legato and smooth that lick is. You're sliding in, holding it, moving up, and then sliding back down. So that's a great example of basically that economy of motion. So everything's based around that chord. You're holding your hand in the shape of that major chord, and then you're basing your arms around that chord. So it's almost like the whole time he's kind of holding down parts of that chord. And basically then blending the notes into each other by sliding, letting the notes ring out over each other. And it creates that amazing sound with double stops and runs. Okay, so let's take a look at some more, some of these techniques. Let's break down these techniques a little bit and look at how it's gonna give you, enhance your clarity in your guitar playing. So one of the things that's really important is to develop really proper finger placement. And the key thing is here is you wanna basically make sure that when you're playing the notes, that your fingers you kind of jutted up right behind the fret. That's where you get the cleanest possible sound. If you're playing in the middle of the fret or back behind, you know, it's it's gonna sound more muddy, but when you're right behind the fret, there, it kind of, you'll find there's a kind of a sweet spot where it sounds really, 
and again you can really clean so you can practice those spider exercises and just make sure you're getting your finger in the right exact spot where you get that sweet spot where the note is perfectly clear and that's going to create that clean buzz free sound so another thing is you want to make sure you're using the tips of your fingers so rather than like sometimes you're going to use the flat parts of your fingers like for those that's a kind of a different technique but basically when you're practicing you want to basically be rolling your fingers over where you're using the very tips of your fingers and so on the other thing is the thumb proper, proper placement of the thumb is basically the thumb should be right behind the neck of the guitar here pointing up at the ceiling and then when you go down um, you can move the thumb when you're, when you're going really high it becomes kind of like a vice that you kind of push into like this you can roll the thumb over so you can create this this hand position like this and you see we, you know when you're playing licks like that the notes are ringing out and you're creating that nice kind of fluid sound for example there you can see my finger my first finger is just staying down there that's that economy of motion my finger staying down there it's just staying there it's like anchoring so yeah just pay attention to that fretting hand making sure that each finger is kind of arched over and when you do that you're going to be avoiding unwanted kind of string noise and that's going to help with the clarity of really getting that nice clean connection with the strings and then the other thing is with your right hand, you want to really make sure you're synced up between your right hand and your left hand. Uh, that's going to really help things be clear as well. You know, doing these exercises where as you exactly as you hit a note, your left hand and right hand move together. Another thing is, as you're playing, you're going to be wanting to be making sure you're muting unwanted string noise. Pretty much most of the time, you're going to use the palm of your hand against the strings here, or you can use sometimes use your thumb and so on. But when you're using the palm of your hand here, that can really help to reduce all those extraneous kind of strings ringing out. That's another way that you can really clean things up. Okay, so once you've got all those techniques together, then you can really hone on mixing them all together with your picks and your slides and your pull-offs and your bends uh, to create that kind of fluid sound. And that's another thing as well, is effective use of vibrato is again, a really another way that you can create that resonance and then that s that sense of the notes ringing out into each other so these tips combined with the consistent practice and attention to that those techniques can significantly enhance the clarity and the precision of your guitar playing so that's it for today and remember like any skill you know mastering getting that smoothness and that uh, fluidity and that economy of motion it takes practice it takes patience so keep at it and you'll see the difference in your playing pretty soon so don't forget to like and share and subscribe i really appreciate you watching the video hopefully this helps and happy playing to you